Fossil fuels currently supply around 80% of the world's energy from coal and oil to natural gas and are a dominant cause of global warming. Crop Energies is making sure that fossil carbons remain in the ground permanently and is the leading producer of renewable ethanol in Europe. It is also a company that continues to create new products to defossilize customers' products. I sat down at the COP28 talks here in Dubai to talk to Heike Baumbash, Head of Investor Relations of Crop Energies. So we're here in Dubai for COP28. What are your first impressions? Well, it's really impressive. It's so big. It's very interesting. It's interesting to meet people who are in global climate change. And yeah, it's a great opportunity for me. So this is your first ever COP, I believe. So why have you decided the time is now to come? Well, I think now it's a really great um, possibility to show Crop Energy's new business model. You know, we are currently implementing our new strategy in innovation from biomass, and it's a great opportunity to explain it to the people here. Very much looking forward to hearing all about Crop Energies. Let's take this over to our studio and okay. continue with the conversation. Sure, sounds great. So Heike, tell us a little bit about Crop Energies, exactly what you do. As I understand, climate action really is in the DNA of your company, so tell us more about it. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Laura. Crop Energy stands for the vision of having a climate-friendly world with the help of renewable products, and they should then ensure the welfare of future and today's generations. When we started with Crop Energies, we started in the field of mobility. So our major product is renewable ethanol, which is used to defossilize the transport sector. Um, we were IPO'd in 2006, and we had quite a big success story since then. But now times are changing, and we are moving into other business areas. Uh, we launched a new strategy that is called Innovation from Biomass, and I'm very happy to tell you a bit more about that. Well, so yes, let's talk about biomass, which in very simple terms is creating renewable energy from plants. So tell us a little bit more about this space within crop energies as well. Yes, that's correct. Biomass that can be plants, that can be waste and residues. And what is nice about biomass is that it's really helping us to replace fossil resources. When you look at it from a greenhouse gas perspective, you know when the plant is growing, it's capturing the CO2 from the atmosphere. And then when it's burned, it's freeing up that CO2 again. So we call that the CO2 cycle. So tell us about some of the products you're rolling out at Crop Energies. Yeah, of course. Well, we started, as I already said, in the field of mobility. So our major product for the time being is renewable ethanol that is blended to petrol. And um, what we currently work on is we try to have a bigger feedstock base, yeah? So we try to increasingly use waste and residues to produce such ethanol, and we just did a small acquisition in that field. But I think even more interesting is really our new activities in the field of bio-based chemicals. Because when you look at the chemical industry, yeah, they have an issue. They need carbons, but the fossil carbons, they should stay in the ground and we at Crop Energies, we offer um, a renewable alternative for that. We use our ethanol as a basis and then we create bio-based chemicals. So our first product that we're just working on is the production of renewable ethyl acetate in Germany, in East Germany. We spent more than 100 million euros in that project. And this um, renewable ethyl acetate, you will find in a lot of day-to-day -day products for example, in cosmetics, nail polisher, yeah, but also in adhesives or glue, etc. So various applications where we offer a renewable alternative. Um, this is not all that we do. We also do a lot in the field of proteins. So we supply the food and feed sector with our products. And last but not least, a very, very interesting path is the use of CO2. But I'm not, I'm not talking about fossil CO2, I'm talking about biogenic CO2. Because when we produce ethanol in the production process, you have a fermentation process, and we have like green biogenic CO2 that is coming up in that process. And this must be, is one important part that you need if you want to produce synthetic fuels. We are not yet uh, there yet, but we are looking into opportunities to also enter into that business segment in the future. 
So what do you think it's going to take to get there then? Have you got a strategy on the way? Yes, we have a strategy on the way, but we have to say it requires a lot of investments, heavy investments. Um, so our investment program that we have just started is already nearly 300 million euros. And if we really want to go, for example, for synthetic fuels, a lot more would be required and also a stable legal framework. What about your customers? How are you helping them? How are you encouraging them to become more sustainable? Yes, in fact, what we do is we help our customers to reduce their carbon footprint. Yeah? Talking about fuels, I think it's, it's obvious that the very liter consumed where our ethanol is blended, you save, or the customer saves, greenhouse gas emissions. For the bio-based chemicals, we are really in a first mover position. We offer a green chemical that a customer can then use to have a, really, have a full renewable product. And this, at least in Europe, is so far not really available. And we would really like to move on on that part. Well, you're looking to halve emissions by 2030 and achieve climate neutrality by 2045. Very ambitious target there. What's the strategy in place to propel that forward? Exactly. Um, well, you know, we are a very energy intense industry and we have already done a lot of efforts actually to achieve that. For example, in this year, in our production plant in Belgium, we installed a second biomass boiler. That means we are nearly climate neutral already in Belgium, which was a big effort and was also expensive. We spent 50 million euros on that investment. Um, if we look at another production site in the UK, for example, we spent another 25 million on increasing energy efficiency and at the same time reducing emissions. And for the whole group, we will first try to increase efficiency because that's what is key to do first. And then second, we will also think about potential fuel switch. But what is always an issue, and you know that especially in Europe, we really need a stable framework, a stable political framework. Yeah? We have seen so many changes in recent years within the EU regulation. We need to know what to do, what is wanted, what is supported, and then we can make a decision on our investments and go ahead. A fascinating insight there into crop energies. Thank you so much for sharing with us and enjoy the rest of COP28. Thank you, Laura.